Welcome back, boot fiends. I'm very excited today because I'm going to be talking about a new boot brand that I've never covered before, but it's probably no stranger to most of you, especially those of you who really love the Pacific Northwest boots, such as White's and Nick's. Today, I'm going to be reviewing for you guys the first pair of Franks I've ever had in my possession. These are my friend Mario's Franks, and stay tuned because my buddy Michael Smith also showed me his Franks and he allowed me to get some footage of his and so I'm going to be doing a separate review on those because I think each pair deserves its own special attention but in today's video we're going to be talking about these bad boys so let's open them up. First thoughts, wow the unboxing, what a surprise, what a bunch of surprises. Comes with a hat, comes with an extra set of laces, comes with a letter to Mario that is sealed, so I probably shouldn't open it. Um, <laughs> it comes with some spare sets of kilties. I also sell kilties on my website, shameful plug for dalesleatherworks.com, where I sell slews of kilties, including Horween Chrome Excel, Horween Dublin, as well as these ones in Sapphire, Aqua, and Bone Battalassi absolutely stunning kilties here. Anyways, I'm not here to talk about me, I'm here to talk about Franks. <laughs> so these kilties are cool. They're not exactly like mine. They, uh, mine, mine are shaped more kind of like a light bulb. These are more of a, they, they almost have like more of a shoehorn shape going on, whereas it's it's elongated, much larger at the, at the you know what, I'm not gonna describe the anatomy because it's, it's gonna sound bad. Either way I do it. <laughs> I was gonna say it was, it's elongated, Kind of like an Anunnaki skull. I guess that doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, a couple standard holes for lacings, and then these appear to be hand cut, and I was hand cutting my kilties until I invested in a die to do toothed kilties. Stay tuned on my website. I will be offering this pattern as a standard option in all leathers. So if you want this one, you'll have the option to buy it. This this die was actually pretty expensive. Typically, my dies for like smooth patterns run me about 90 bucks, but this one was $250 because of the, I guess the jagged edge made it much more technical and more difficult to make. And so this one, it's probably gonna be the only one I order. But anyways, I will have some very consistent kilties stamped out for you if you're interested. These might be cut by hand. I can't really tell, to be honest. They are identical when you flip them over. The, the teeth line up perfectly. Th that said, they do kind of look a little inconsistent, but it could be just the die is a little bit inconsistent. But at the same time, it looks like they laid down both of these and cut them. Uh, if they did hand cut them, they would have laid them down both because the cuts are identical. And so that's just me sort of reverse creating these kilties. Anyways, enough about the kilties. Let's get into the rest of the box. All right, so we got a <laughs> beautiful Frank's t-shirt in a size medium. It's got the logo on the chest as well as the logo across the back. Very nice. Frank's Boot Company, made in the USA, Spokane, Washington. Let's get to the boots. So these are going to be Frank's boots on the 55 last in a steel Predator. Mario designed these with a black toe cap. And the toe caps are actually sourced from the Seidel Tannery in Milwaukee. It's their black work leather. But this is my first time seeing this steel predator in person and it is wow it is amazing it has a really nice firm temper about it it also has a real nice almost like a chalky feel about it it doesn't feel overly oiled just looking at these right off the bat you're probably saying to yourself especially if you're not that well versed in pacific northwest boots is this looks like a white and or this looks like a nyx I have one pair of whites, one pair of Nicks, and I reviewed both of those. And uh, yeah, the Pacific Northwest makers are very consistent, mostly because they all have the same DNA and or they all have the sort of the same evolution slash lineage. Um, all those guys knew each other and it was from very humble beginnings back in the day. And uh, long story short, uh, Bennett Stistown did a really good interview with Frank and his wife, Michelle. So I'll leave a link to his interview in the description below. He basically goes through how Franks started. Franks was a Nix employee for quite some time. I'm uh, summarizing here. Nix essentially fell under new ownership and Frank, he likes to fly solo. He likes 
creative license. He, he likes the artisan approach, the creative approach. He doesn't so much like feeling like a cog in the factory wheel. And so he left Nix and then about six months later, he decided that he had the knowledge and the skills and the wherewithal to start his own brand. And so he started his own boot brand, named it after himself. He actually moved back into the old Nix space because a lot of that old space in Spokane, he had worked in for 20 years. He basically, he put up walls in there. He knew the place front and back. And so he released it, went with his wife across the country, purchased up a bunch, bunch of equipment, got some employees. I think it's a team of about uh, four or five people. What differentiates Franks from the rest of the Pacific Northwest makers is the fact that they're just so personal. Like you could call, you could talk to them on the phone. They're more than happy to do custom orders. They're not trying to get rich doing this. They're making just enough to get by, but it's really their love. Like, like Frank took a break from working and just missed boot making so much that he wanted to come back to it. And I think that's a really cool story because it's, it's just so, it's so reachable to the, to the common man, especially somebody like me who, you know, started his own small leather business and I really, really love it. I can't do without leather. I got to get my hands on it. I got to make stuff. I love sending stuff to people, making them happy. That's what I love. Truly. Um, it's just the action of doing it. It's not, it's not for the money at the end of the day. It's the, it's the interaction that you get with the rest of the world and with the boot community. In that interview with Stitchdown, Michelle, uh, Frank's wife, who runs the most of the social media for Frank's, she loves the engagement with the customers. She loves handling custom orders, sending the boots out, and then years later, doing the resoles, handling resoles. They like building up a small niche family. They're not looking for thousands and thousands of customers. And that sort of uh, very humble approach to business is something I really can appreciate because it's kind of my approach too. Like I've, I've never been that ambitious of a person. I'm kind of a boring person. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of like to be low key. I like to, I like to do exciting things and I like to explore, but I do like to have my own creative license. I do not do well in large groups. I don't do well following instructions, let's say. And uh, so for, for that reason, I really understand the mindset of wanting to be independent and sort of just being your own boss. And that's what Frank's does. And uh, so he has no ill will against Nick's or White's. He just likes to do his own thing, and that I fully respect, no doubt about it. Uh, my other buddy Vince, Vince Romano, recently relocated to the Pacific Northwest, so a brand that I've covered extensively on my channel is now also an official Pacific Northwest brand, so very cool to see Vince sort of make that evolution over to the Pacific Northwest. He joins some legends in the game, that's for sure. And anyways, let's get a look at this boot. So we've got a smooth finished cap toe leather i think there's steel in there it is so structured there's no way i could squeeze that down i believe mario which thank you mario for having these boots sent to me to review mario is going to be using these on the work site on the construction site and so he's actually eager for me to get these to him because these are going to protect his toes in the case of massive uh, cinder blocks falling on them. <laughs> so, so that will save your toes for sure. Um, we've got a nice arch built in. Uh, one of the coolest thing is this Viltrite will not slip neoprene oil proof cat's paw sole. Wow, I've never seen a cat's paw in person. At least I don't think so. Actually, I think I did. I reviewed some boots a while ago that had cat's paws. Anyways, these are rare, and, I, and to my knowledge, they, they don't make these anymore, so they're increasingly becoming a collector's item. So the cat's paw heel and the front half sole is, is becoming a collector's item, and this is one kick-ass sole. This, is, this definitely harkens to the Dr. Soul original Super Grip soles, as seen on these Imperium mocks in buck brown harness very cool it's just got a lot of character you know the sole it's not only super duper high quality that you can tell um but it also just has a lot of very unique character you know it's got a cat on it just really cool prominent features just really standout features i really love that and then you've got nails one two three four five nine nails in the sole the shank protrudes here, and then not to mention the arch support. So I learned a little bit more about the arch support doing some re research on Franks. We talk about the difference between a boot with arch support. The arch support actually 
comes in and what it does is it, it evenly distributes your entire body's weight across the entirety of your foot as compared to a more of a flat constructed boot like these Grantstone Diesels. The majority of your body's weight is gonna be centered on the heel, but by increasing that arch, it actually takes, it actually forces the foot to relax and it allows your entire body weight to be evenly distributed. What that does is that's really good for guys with back problems, really good for guys with knee problems, any sort of alignment issues, it really comes in handy. In fact, uh, in the Stitch Down article, it was talking about how there's a surgeon who stands 16, 20 hours at times who buys Frank's boots and wears them with the arch support because he needs it. Otherwise, he gets really fatigued without the arch support. So super cool feature there. Steel Predator, it's a really nice metallic gray color. We've got Frank's branding here. These are in a size 9D. And so let's compare these Frank's to my whites here. So. The Franks and the Whites, I believe they're both 8-inch shafts. Yes, 8-inch boots. Fully gusseted all the way up. These Whites are in olive wax flesh. These Franks are in both Steel Predator and the black smooth finish leather. And the black smooth finish leather is not only on the toe cap, it's also on the tongue. Fully gusseted all the way up. We've got really cool painted black eyelets. One, two, three, four standard eyelets. One, two, three, four, five speed hooks. And then a finishing standard eyelet on the top. Basically the same hardware as on the whites here. Basically the same exact back heel stay minus the pull loop on the Franks. Same exact style of back heel stay. It's sort of this uh, triangular pattern and same exact back heel stay. Though the patterning is a little different on the whites you see the back heel stay actually comes over and crosses over, uh, cross over into the vamp panel. Whereas on the Franks, it doesn't do that. The back heel stay doesn't cross over. It actually stops before it can intersect with this next panel. Pretty cool there. I, I was always actually a little confused as to why this happens on the whites, though maybe it is determined by sizing. Maybe all these back heel counters are the same size, and so the longer the boot becomes, maybe this back heel counter slides back, and maybe then it wouldn't intersect. But these are eight and a halfs. These whites are also on the 55 last. So these lasts, uh, to my knowledge, are the same exact last. The 55 francs, the 55 nicks, and the 55 whites, I believe, are all the same exact last. In fact, let's get some nicks in the picture. So these are my nicks, Nobleman's Apothecary boots designed by my friend Angel at Nobleman's Apothecary. These nicks seem to be more imitating the Franks in that uh, this back heel stay doesn't overlap. It, it perfectly intersects with the quarter panel here, right, right here, and then the vamp sort of begins from there. So there's no overlap, whereas on the whites, the whites is the only one that overlaps, which again, I'm not exactly sure why that, why that does, and that's splitting hairs. That's, that's not an important thing. So, but these, uh, these nicks are in Natural wax flesh, Horween, olive wax flesh, whites, Horween, and then steel predator. They're basically built with the same DNA, the same uh, workmanship, the same styling in mind. There are gonna be differences, but if you t told me that these were all from the same maker, I'd believe you. You know, they're, they're near indistinguishable in terms of workmanship. The workmanship on all these is pretty much on the same exact level. The stitches are, there's not a stitch out of place. In fact, the whites, I've seen more whites with wonkier stitching, especially in the welt stitching. Um, but the Nicks seem to have their shit together when it comes to welt stitching. And the Franks are no different. I'm looking at the Franks now. There's no stitch out of place. This is not shoddy work. This is perfectly done stitch down construction for sure. 180 degree double stitch down welt. Very, very good work there. On the back heel, we've got one, two, three, four, five layers of thick veg tan leather, and then the midsole is another layer, so basically six layers of veg tan in your heel. That's gonna be a ton of support. You want more leather between your feet and the ground, no doubt about it. That veg tan is gonna offer a ton of support, and then obviously the cat's paw, so lots of good support on that heel with the arch, and then that real thick layer of midsole leather running across. And yeah, on all these boots, the vamp is quadruple stitched down to the quarter. Cap toe is quadruple stitched down on the Franks, on the whites. 
triple stitched on all the back heel stays and yeah even the vamp stitching from boot to boot we've got two double two twin rows of reinforcement stitching down the quarter here and then a box stitch at the base of the eyelets and the whites has sort of a slanted stitch at the base of the eyelets anyways we're splitting hairs here all the eyelets are the same thickness they're using the really high grade stuff that will never cinch down on you which is really good. And then yeah, the Franks have a really nice a really nice rolled top edge at the throat. Beautiful. One thing that Franks said uh, in the Stitch Down interview that really resonated with me was he asks customers not to judge them on their mistakes. He asks customers to judge them on how they respond to mistakes. That really resonated r with me. I mean, I, th I think that's that's a really really sage advice for anybody who's running a small business like for and that's good advice for consumers. It's like, dude, Everybody makes mistakes. Think about the last time you made a mistake, right? Everybody's gonna make a mistake. It's how does that person respond when you inform them that they made a mistake? Do they rectify it or do, do they get defensive and double down? It's like, that's a big deal. Um, and I have seen nothing but glowing reviews on Franks from consumers. I have no reason to doubt that they stand by their product 100% of the way. Yeah, so the first time I ever heard of Predator leather, uh, it was Truman who ran it. So Predator is a Horween leather. It's a newer Horween leather. Here's what the Tannery Row has to say about it. Predator is a combination tan leather that blends the durability of a chrome tanned base with a heavy vegetable retanage. We then incorporate a rich blend of waxes to create a tonal appearance of the leather, which will burnish over time and create a rich patina. It's got a subtle pull-up effect, great for footwear. Available in three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half ounces. They've got whiskey, orange, black, and steel. And so this would be the steel, steely predator leather. Absolutely amazing. And so yeah, Frank's Boot Company, they've got a few different models. They have their 10 inch Wilshire. They have their Commander, which might be a plain toe. Got a 10 inch front range, which seems to have like a cowboy boot sort of aesthetic to it. They have the Ground Pounder. Yeah, they have the Wilshire. So yeah, they have the Atlas, which kind of looks like this NYX. This NYX one, it looks kind of looks like the Atlas. They've got the Clear Cut. They've got the Fire Commander. They've got the Front Range, the Ground Pounder, the Ground Pounder with a Crepe Sole, the Lace to Toe, the Monkey Boot, the Padded Collar Shoe, the Rainier, which is a plain toe sort of rough out. The Royal Commander, the Riker, the Station Boot. Oh wow, that's crazy. That's got a zipper on it. The Maxon, the Patriot, Type One Commander. Yeah, so a lot of styles. But the main thing to remember is that you can customize. And in fact, my buddy Mike has had a lot, done a lot of custom work through Frank's. And overall, they're just super nice people, super accommodating. They don't like to tell they don't like to tell a customer no. They like to make sure everybody's well taken care of, and they treat you like family. What more can you ask for than that? I think that's super cool. I believe this is going to be the Commander model because they've run other Commanders in Steel Predator, and very very cool. I like that name, the Commander. That's a, that's a super cool name for it. And anyways, before you ask, this is my new blade denim jacket from Hiroshi Kato in 14 ounce stretch selvage denim. If you're interested, I will leave a link to this jacket in the description below. It is my favorite denim jacket of all time. Check it out if you want one. I think it's by far the best denim jacket I've ever had. Thanks a lot for watching guys. What do you think about these Steel Predator Commander Frank's boots. I'm blown away. They definitely live up to the heritage of Pacific Northwest PNW boots all the way. Another huge thanks to Mario, aka Boot Reaper, on Instagram. I'll also leave a link to his Instagram in the description below. You can follow him. Uh, he's got an amazing boot collection. Anyways, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe. 
please leave me your thoughts on these incredible Frank's boots in the description below. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let's keep the love of boots alive. I'll see you all in my next video.